Hello and welcome to the Stretch Yourself, the Empowerment Podcast. This is the show for entrepreneurs and people that are all about focus and engaging on improving their relationships in life and in business. And on this episode, man, we're having a very special episode. This episode is for the men. Have you ever struggled with the relationship that you're having with your wife or your significant other? Well, that's what we're exactly what we're going to help you with on this week's show where you're gonna learn how to be a strong man that a woman wants so that you can have a great, fulfilling relationship. Today's guest on the Empowerment Podcast, I am pleased and very honored to have Elliot Katz on the show. Elliot Katz is the author of the book, Being a Strong Man a Woman Wants. He works with men and women in relationships and marriage and make sure that they have some insights on being that strong man that a woman wants in a relationship. Now, just to give you a brief bio about him, he is definitely a speaker and author, and his book has been translated in 24 languages all over the world. He's done tons of radio interviews and television interviews that you can see on uh, YouTube. He has has them out there and he coaches men and he speaks to groups of men and women on relationships and how they will be able to improve their relationship with their significant other. Elliot Katz, welcome to the show, my friend. Great to be here. Great, great. Hey, listen, I received your book, Being a Strong Man a Woman Wants, in the mail and I have to tell you man um, I haven't put it down uh, I've read the book twice I'm halfway through it again and uh, man uh, some of the things that's in the book is eye opening I mean for me and again like I always say Elliot I like to use myself as a guinea pig um, sometimes I give that control away to my wife and then sometimes I take it back and then it's that it's that probably that in, irregular irregular thing that you're doing or the inconsistency in you being that strong man in that relationship that causes that indecisiveness and then us just being confused and knowing what a woman actually wants and what they want to have that strength to be in the relationship so i'm going to stop talking because you have tons to say so i'm going to ask a question first question i'll say is what is probably the most important thing that a man could do one of the most important things that a man can do to start right now improving that relationship with their wife or significant other? Well, the most important thing that a woman wants from a man is she wants him to be a leader. She doesn't want a man who, who's always asking her what to do because women will say that when, when they always have to tell a man what to do, it makes her feel like he is a child and she is his mother. And she does, she wants a husband, not a child. You know, what is leadership? You know, you know, so, so much, this leadership gets bad press. Like, men have been think, well, I don't want to be controlling, so I'll just let her make all the decisions. And she'll, I'll, she'll see I'm the nicest guy in the world, and why, then why is she so frustrated with me? She wants a man who's a leader. What is leadership? It's knowing what's going on in your home. Stepping forward, you see a situation that could benefit from your leadership, step forward and do, do it. And, and, you know, do it. Uh, take charge. Uh, that's what women like to say. They want a man who takes charge. They don't want a man, if your wife has already made a decision about something, and you say, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do the complete opposite because I'm going to show you I'm a leader. That's not being a leader. That's that's undermining her and causing conflict. Step forward. Be a leader. That You know, it's so amazing when I, when I meet women and they say to me, what does your book say it means to be a man? I said, you want, in one word, a leader. And they smile and they say, well, how do I find a man like that? That's what they want. <laughs> okay. Okay. So being a leader. Now, um, there were some things about, you know, you said about being a leader. Um, and, and what I read in the book, and you have the book. The book is so awesome, guys. I have to tell you, you have to get the book. Um, it's told in a, still, in a story type practical way for you to easily understand and assimilate the information. So there was a part in there where... Um, they are going to make decisions and um, you, you, you're not supposed to undermine them, but you're supposed to respect their feelings. But in the end, they're supposed to, you're supposed to make that decision. Am I correct? Well, you know, it, it's not about being controlling. Women want men to make decisions. You know, if she's really against it and, and I mean, you've got to come, maybe you have to compromise, but 
they don't like men who are always putting all the decisions on them. You know, I couldn't count the number of single women who will tell me that a man asks them out on a date and, you know, would you like to go out Saturday night? And she says, yes. And then he says, well, where would you like to go? Where do you want to do it? It's like, it's, it's a big letdown. Like, for a lot of women, you know, if we can't even choose a place to go for a cup of coffee, you know, it, how's he going to handle a family? So it, it's not like leaving all the decisions to, your, to the woman or to your wife. They hate it. You know, when a woman calls her husband at work, what would you like for supper, chicken or fish? And he says, whatever you make is fine. It's like, she wants you to make a decision. Oh, okay. Um, big decisions, you have to make together. But all, like, they don't like men who keep asking them to make decisions. Step forward, make a decision, be a man. Okay, great. So what you're saying is just basically, um, when she asks you a decision, more so less be decisive. Um, and, and I, and I've heard tons of ladies that say that, and, and, and I have to agree with you, Elliot, where they said they, a guy, you know, he musters up the courage to, to ask them out and then they ask him out and then they get in the car and they're like, where do you want to go? And he's like, I don't know. Where do you want to go? And it just totally blows the whole relationship atmosphere yeah. and what they're trying to build all together. So I definitely can understand that. Now, um, there you know, was a, there was. Go ahead. I just want to say, when you take the time to plan a date, when you're a man with a plan, and uh, when you think of something that you would both enjoy doing, it makes the woman feel special. It's like, hey, this, I feel special. He took the time to think about, to make a plan, to make some decisions, then leave it all on me. It makes the woman feel special. Okay. Go ahead, Ron. No, no, no. You're perfectly fine. Please. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, another question that I have for you is about being worthy. Um when that guy is trying to be worthy or once he decides upon something, it's up to him to make that work. Now, a perfect example that I can give you, and I'm going to use myself for an example, is, you know, my wife wants to make a decision. And then nine times out of ten, I'm giving her the reasons why it's not supposed to happen that way and trying to explain it. So I try, from my aspect, to make her see both sides of the field. Um, in the end, I ultimately make the decision. This is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to be able to do it and be decisive with it. There has been times, though, where I have let my wife uh, take the wheel, if you want to say, and she's drove it straight off the cliff. Um, <laughs> when is it a good time for you to say, you know, when is it a good time for you to say, okay, I respect my wife's, you know, what she's doing, or I respect my wife or significant others, um, judgment or advice for this but i'm going to go and i'm going to do it my way without hurting their feelings well that's what that's the challenge uh one of the big challenges that men face so you, you know if you let your wife if you give it to your wife and she drives it off the cliff don't blame her because she's going to say you want why didn't you if you knew it was wrong you should have stepped forward and, and done something about it other times, I mean, you you've got to decide if it's wrong, and and you know it's wrong. You can't let it go on because ultimately she'll say, "Why did why did you let me do it?" If you knew it was wrong, you know it's really interesting. <laughs> men men like to blame women. They give in. Like I remember, you know, I met a fellow who was divorced, and he said his wife ran up fifty thousand dollars on the credit cards, and I thought, "Wow, well, how could you how could you let that go on?" I mean, that was terrible. That was wrong for her to do it, but. I had, I, you know, I, he wanted sympathy from me. I said, you let it go on. You have children. How did you let it go on? So you have to realize whatever goes wrong, people are going to hold you responsible for it. You, you can't say, oh, my wife pushed me into it because nobody will have any sympathy for you. So that's what you have to realize. You are responsible for what goes on in your family. If it, she wants to do something and you know it's wrong, you just have to say, no, we can't do it because it's wrong. And I'm responsible for the welfare of our family. You have, you have to realize you're responsible. Okay, great, great. So three things that I want to cover, um, and, and, and I just feel, and just let me know if I'm wrong, Elliot, because, man, you're the expert. Uh, I just want to cover, again, we, we've just talked about decision-making. Um, I think three things that are most critical in any relationship is decision-making, uh, financial, uh, when they're working together for a financial goal, which brings it to goal setting in their future, because women are... Um, you know, they're, they're straight linear thinkers. They're black and white thinkers. So they definitely want the reality that's gone. Most guys are visionary and um, they see things ahead. Although sometimes they don't see everything and the woman brings a bit of the reality. So 
Um, based on those three, meaning, uh, you know, communication, what is the best communication rule that you would be able to give a guy that's listening to this show in order for him to enhance his relationship with his wife or significant other? Well, you know, it's a good thing to listen to your wife, but, you know, communication too often becomes another word that became, begins with the same three letters, complaining. Often people <laughs> will start complaining to their spouse about things and they'll think, well, I'm communicating to you. You know what? That that doesn't work. Nobody likes to be uh, criticized and complained to. Communication really is how how do I communicate to the person in the way they need to be communicated to? You know, don't complain, don't criticize. Nobody likes that. What do you have to say to get her to be you know to respond the way you want? Maybe it takes compliments. Maybe it takes you know recognizing her all the good things she does. Speak to communicate in the way because that's leadership. You know. Okay. This, this book is really about my own journey, and I said, well, I need to learn leadership. So I took a course on leadership, and the teacher said, the most important thing the teacher said was, you have to communicate to the person the way they need to communicate it to, not the way you want to communicate to them. So you might say, well, that's a really stupid thing you did. How could you be so stupid? Well, that's not going to get you what you want. Think about what does your wife need to hear. Okay, great. Say it in that way. Okay. Not the way you feel like saying it. Okay, not the way you feel like saying it. Okay, great. But I heard something. You said something about your what you went through. So um, before we close out this session, can you give a backstory before we go over these last two um, these two suggestions about the financial and the golds? What is your backstory? What's the juicy juice? How did you come about doing this? Well, like like a lot of these kind of books, is my own journey. I was married for ten years. I got divorced. And at first I blamed the other person. Then I asked myself, what do I have to learn about all this? And I, I really set out on a journey. I listened to other men. They were all confused. Really, all, they're all confused. <laughs> the more yeah. I listen to men, really, it, I've been doing this for years. and we're all, we're all facing the same challenges. And really, one of the things, I, you know, I read books on relationships. They said nothing to me. And it only went to the, to the timeless teachings that men used to teach younger men about being men that I was blown away because it coincided with what I heard women complain is lacking in men today. They don't show leadership. They don't make decisions. They don't take responsibility. And you know what? When I read this stuff written a hundred years ago, even a thousand years ago, there's all these writings that because really men need to learn from other men how to be a man. It doesn't come naturally. You know, the reason so many men are confused today is is because we've lost that. We you know, a lot of men grow up without fathers or their fathers work long hours okay. and they really were raised by women and were really confused, like, what am I supposed to do? What I want to be a good man. What am I supposed to do? You know, we, we hear leadership, you know, oh, don't be controlling. Yeah, don't be controlling, but controlling and being a leader are opposites. So this is really my own journey of learning what does it mean to be a man in a relationship, in a marriage, and just going to that timeless wisdom that men used to be taught. Wow, okay. And so, now my goal is to change the men of the world because, you know, it's interesting. You know, as you said, the book's been translated to 24 languages. And at first when I wrote this, I thought, this is just for me, just for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, every man I talk to is like unsure what, what they're supposed to do. It, it's, and I realized this is, this is what it means to be a man. We're all we, we're confused. We're looking for guidance. And we used to get it from, you know, a father or older male role model. And so I just put that timeless wisdom in, in this book and say, read this book, it will change everything. And the interesting thing is, the women are the biggest fans. <laughs> They're the ones saying, how do I get my husband to read this book? The men, I have to talk to them because they don't realize what they don't know. They don't realize that there's these insights that can really improve their relationship. They think what they're doing, letting their wife make all the decisions, like just say, whatever you want, you decide, showing no leadership. Why, being such a nice guy, how come... How could she be, How could fed she up be with so me? upset with me? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I can't. I, I, I learned there has to be a balance. Um, you know, there has to be a balance, uh, and, and she just wants to know that you are listening to her. But more importantly, that she's part of the solution. Um, I think it's really key for everything. I mean, and my my nephew. I just have to tell you, my nephew had just recently got married, and I actually purchased this book, and I'm going to be gifting it to him uh, for Christmas because okay. he said, uh, "If there's anything that you have, um, can you tell me?" I said, "I, I think I got something for you that's going to really help you and start you off on a good foot." You know what I mean? Um, so the last two financials and gold planning. What type of um, 
recommendation can you give them one key thing that, that we can take away from this that they could implement yesterday? Well, just realize that financial stress will bring out problems in a marriage, can bring out problems in a marriage that wouldn't have otherwise have arisen. You know, we, we all think we all want the big house and we think, oh, we'll work hard, we'll sacrifice it. But, you know, that financial stress can just wear you down and destroy your marriage. So, you know, live within your means. It's better to have peace in your home than than to have a lot of possession and that stress of trying to meet those payments every month. Definitely. Aim definitely. for peace. Be happy with what you have. And, and don't get in over your head. So just keep it, just keep it, keep it straightforward. Don't try to live above, beyond your means is basically what, what I'm gathering from this. And then... Yeah, you see sometimes, you know, you know, a husband will, oh, I'll buy this big house, it'll make my wife happy. But then the stress is there and over their heads. That stress just destroys the marriage. You need, you need peace. Peace is better, uh, you know, a small house with peace than a palace with strife. Definitely, definitely. And goal setting. What would you say would be one of the major keys for goal setting? Because some guys may have some visions that their wife has not bought into, and then their wife may have some un, uh, um, hidden agendas that they are trying to lead their man into. So what kind of advice would you be able to give to them? Well, it's very important, and that's really where communication is key. So often men and women will think, well, you know, my my spouse will go along with me on this, you know. They don't need to without talking about it. But you better talk about it because you know, you know when you in the courting stage, everything is wonderful. You know, she's beautiful. He's so attracted to her. But hey, okay, now that's very nice. But then don't forget to talk practicalities of like, you know, where are we going to live? How are we going to live? How are we going to raise our children? Are we going to be involved in this kind of community or in that community? Are we going to be involved with our religion? Oh, these things can cause big problems. You know, better talk about it. Make sure you have the same goals. Okay, great. So make sure you have the same goals. Uh, don't and live it's not beyond just your attraction, means. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's not just attraction. Definitely that. So the three things, takeaways, guys, if you've been listening to Elliot on the show, number one, communication, straightforward, be a leader, be decisive, but more importantly, listen and understand what your woman wants, but ultimately make that decision because she wants you to leave. Uh, the second thing I think he brought up was um, um, uh, financials is living within your means. Don't try to be uh, gregacious and above and beyond. That comes going to call undue stress from what uh, Elliot has said. And then the last thing is, you know, make sure that you have a plan together, not just for that outward uh, appearance, but for that future of things to come. So, uh, Elliot, man, uh, thanks for being on the show. Guys, um, okay, thank you very I much, truly, Ross. truly appreciate you. Where can they find you, Elliot? Okay, my website is www.elliotkatz.com. It's E-L-L-I-O-T-T-K-A-T-Z.com. And my Facebook page is the name, is the title of the book, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants. Okay. And if they want to get the book, it's on Amazon as a paperback and a Kindle. It's also an ebook on Kobo and iBooks. And it's also available in bookstores. And if you go into the store and they're sold out, just ask them. They'll order it for you and get it to you pretty quickly. Okay, great, great. So, guys, the book is on Amazon, and it is Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants. He is out there in social media. Check him out on Facebook. The, Facebook is the title of his book, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants. Um, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Kindle. He said it's downloadable, and it's in your bookstore. So, if they don't have it, you can request it, and they will have it for you very quickly. Elliot, again, I want to thank you. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to have you on the show. Okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me, Ron. Thanks for listening to Stretch Yourself, the Empowerment Podcast. There are hundreds and thousands of podcasts out there, and I want to personally thank you for choosing my podcast to help you build a better relationship in business and in life. To listen and download more interviews like this one, connect and subscribe to the channel. It is available on iTunes and on Google Play for download. Connect with me socially. Keyword, stretch yourself. Thanks again for listening.